Hi, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I want to talk about self-worth. You know, we now live on a planet with about 7 billion people and it is so easy to get lost in all those numbers to find our uniqueness, our individualism and most of all how to feel special. So mental health obviously is on a decline because one of the reasons being self-worth. So I'm going to use some exercises today, okay? Let's go there. So if you want to play along here with me today, grab a pen and paper and do these exercises. Write down this information and say, am I doing all that I can to improve my egotistical side, which is our self-worth, self-love, self-appreciation, self-gratitude, and most of all, our self-worth and our value, okay? So the first exercise that I want to do is imagine that you walk into a shop. Let's just go there with your favorite shop. What's your favorite shop? Walk into that shop and up on the shelf for sale is you. Huh, there's me sitting on the shelf. So the first thing is we've got to buy this item, which is us. So there's a couple of scenarios. One, we'd walk up and see what the price tag is. Two, if we couldn't find that price tag, we'd actually ask the shop assistant, excuse me, can you tell me how much I am worth? And third, we'd know how much we're worth. So first of all, think about which one of those categories do you fit into? Are you looking at yourself to say, how much am I worth? Are you relying on someone else to tell you how much you're worth? Or most importantly, do you already know the cost or value of who you are? It's a hard one for a lot of people because a lot of times we do rely on other people to justify how much we are worth. So you go up and you look at the price tag now that we've got the price tag. What's written on that price tag? How much are you worth? Five dollars? Ten dollars? Hundred bucks? Five hundred thousand dollars? I'll tell you something, keep adding the zeros. We are worth billions, trillions, zillions because we are worthy of that money, value, okay? So let's have a look at another exercise. How well do we know ourselves? Because one of the things that I'm going to point out today, which is on my list, is do what makes us happy. So how do we know what makes us happy? So here's another exercise and they're easy. Name your, um, what's your favorite number? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? Do you like day or do you like nighttime? Do you like mountains or do you like water? Do you like cats or do you like dogs? That's a psychological test. And I'm not going to tell you the answers. Oh, geez, I'm being nasty here, aren't I? But the answers to those questions are all explained in my book, Heal to Success. Find out who you are. I'll just give you one. Okay? If you're a day person, it means that you're very social. You like being around people. You may have insecurities where you need to be around people. But you may also be that extrovert where you need to be around people to make you feel better because you're such a bubbly, excitable person. People who like the night time, they're our reflectors. They're our thinkers. They're the people who like to contemplate things, the analyzers, the researchers. So nighttime people make the best scientists. People who work alone in a lab creating things. Our day people, they're the ones who work best in customer service, where we're interacting with other people, that sort of thing, okay? So every single one of those questions that I just asked 
does tell you who you are. And I do get amazed with how people, how many people I do that test with. And they say, wow, I didn't realise. But it's true. I am like that. I do like that. And I didn't even know it about myself. Okay. So I'm just going to plug it again. My book is called Heal to Success. And it's available at www.lindaray.info if you do want a copy. Because that book is 186 pages. It took me three years of research. And it's all legitimate counselling and scientific reasons why we don't go ahead in our lives. So if you do want a copy, go and buy it. Okay? So let's get back to self-worth. First thing is, we now live with this 7 billion people on the planet. How easy is it for us to compare ourselves to others? We look at, you know, I'll, I'll just go there. I got an invite to my, <laughs> I don't want to say it, <clears throat> but it was my 25th school reunion. <laughs> Do you think I went? Why did I need to go was the first thing. All these people from my school, I don't know them. I don't interact with them anymore. I don't know them. I don't have them as friends. They're not family. So why would I even bother? Secondly, I know if I did go, the first thing people would ask me when I turn up, what do you do? It's a judgment. If I said I worked as a janitor compared to, oh, I'm going for the presidency next year. See the difference? People then judge. And it makes us have that unworthiness based on how they feel about us oh Linda you divorced oh my gosh see the judgment oh my gosh I've been with my husband now for 30 years we've got 16 children what's wrong with you because we're not the same what what happened in that failure of a relationship dare I tell them I've had three marriages I don't care and that's the opinion and the philosophy and the mental attitude that we must have. When people judge us, accuse us for why we do something, that's not right. They don't walk our shoes. They've never lived our lives. They don't know what we've been through to get where we are today. So stop comparing others to ourselves as well. Oh my God, look at that girl. She's got longer hair than me. Oh my God, she's so skinny. Oh my God, look at that guy with his great job. And here I am, I only do this. I only do this is showing us that we have no self-worth. Okay? Remember, we are worth trillions of dollars each. Okay? Material items that we possess we don't have them when we pass away and go home I was up there for about five years I was not concerned about the size of my house how many cars I had in the garage and how many um, yachts I had in the marina I don't care it doesn't matter in the eternalness of our soul what matters is how we feel and what energy we create within ourselves okay so don't compare yourself to others they have their own life path they have their own life contracts of lessons that they must learn so don't try and work their out because we're trying to work our own out okay you know we don't get told our own life lessons or our own paths that we have to leave so why start comparing and trying to work out somebody else's don't worry about it just let it go stop worrying about it think about something else that's important to you okay so don't compare yourself to others is the big thing don't worry about what other people think about you it doesn't matter you know kids especially they put so much onus on being living up to what other people think of them at schools so I say it to my daughter every day do not worry about what they think of you as long as you're doing your best in the truth of who you are 
That is all that matters and that's all that I'm proud of as a parent. Okay? <clears throat> We're all humans. We all make mistakes. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has issues. Everybody has failures. Because that's human behavior. So don't think about what mistakes or failures or things that didn't go the way we wanted in the past. Think about where you are right now and what it is that we do want to create in our future. Okay? So we all make mistakes. Look at your flaws. And that's what I want you to do right now. Because if you've got a pen and paper and you're doing exercises, write down right now the best thing about your physical body. It could be your toes, it could be your height, it could be your hair, it could be the color of your eyes, it could be the way that you talk eloquently. It may be anything. Be proud of those things, yes? They're the best feature. Now the hard thing is, pick your worst feature. What is it that you really do not like about your own personal body? Write that one down. And I'll go there with mine. So you know I'm being truthful about this. I hate my teeth. Okay? I was in hospital till I was two. And I was in oxygen tents until I was about two years old. So what that pure oxygen did, it affected my eyes, uh, my ears, my nose. Nose, if you listen to my voice, I'm very nasally. And it also affected my teeth. So I'm honest with people. I'm missing a tooth right now. Do I worry about it? Well, yeah, it's a health issue. I'll get it fixed when I'm ready. But when I look at other people and I talk to other people, I don't care what I physically look like. I do things that I like, like I like my curly hair, so I've just washed it this morning and I put some gel in it to make it curly because I like it. I've got red nail polish on because I like it. I dye it blonde because I like it because it makes me feel better, which is my self-worth, okay? So <clears throat> I was over at my brother-in-law's one night and he said to me, Linda, you know, you do a lot of videos now. You're getting interviewed by people all over the planet. Why don't you get your teeth fixed? And this is my gem that I say to him and I've said it to others. When I stand in front of people, they should be look, listening to the words that come out of my mouth instead of putting onus on the mouth saying the words. Think of like, like that. So we twist it around. So instead of looking at my mouth, listen to the words coming out of the mouth. Okay? And now do that with every flaw, every imperfection, everything wrong that you think is wrong with your body because it's only what you think. So stop being judgmental about the little flaws, the freckles, the moles, the wrinkles. Oh my God, I wish I was three foot taller or I wish I was three foot smaller. They're all things that make us unique. So be grateful for them. I'm grateful that I'm missing a tooth because it shows I'm human. It shows that I've lived. I've had battles in my life. It shows I've been through those wars and I won. Yes. Get that excitement and say, you know what? Linda's right. I have this scar as a testimony that I went through that hardship. And stand up and you say, you know what? Other people are just wusses. They wouldn't be able to go through that pain. They wouldn't go through that grief. They wouldn't be able to go through that trauma and survive it. How proud am I that I'm standing here today as a testimony that this stuff has happened to me? That's what I want you to say to yourself. And then say it to others. Like me talking to my brother-in-law. I've shut him down. Because what I was telling him in all honesty without really saying it, I don't care what I look like. I don't care that you judge me because I'm not affected energetically by what you think. 
I'm doing what makes me happy and I'm doing my life the way I want it to be. So that gives me that strength where I can then be confident and have my own self-worth. This stuff really works. So, you are enough. Don't put yourself down because the more we say that we're putting ourselves down, our brain creates it. It makes a routine of it where we start getting feeling depressed. We start getting anxious about things in the future. We start thinking about stuff and thinking, oh my God, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not worthy of this. We're all worthy. Okay? So be proud of all those flaws, idiosyncrasies, all those little things that make you individual. You want to stand out from the other 7 billion people on the planet, so be proud of it. Okay? So the next thing is be happy. Okay? On my list, I said be happy. Be happy about what you've been through. So how do we become happy? Appreciate all those things. Be grateful. I am grateful. I died in 2001. It was scary at the time. But look where I am today. Now the worst case scenario, I said it in a video the other day, the worst case scenario is we die. I've already done that. So whatever life throws at you guys, just shrug it off and say, oh, is that the best you've got? And be grateful for it. Thank you so much. There was obviously a lesson in there for something for me to learn from. So what could that lesson be? Because that shows growth. That shows confidence. And most of all, it's our self-worth. Okay? So appreciate all those little things that life does to us. Next one. <clears throat> Eat right and exercise eating right now in my book heal to success oh i'm plugging it again but i want to because if you do want a copy it's only 10 bucks on my website and that's australian dollars so it comes down to about six dollars us so our dopamine levels which is a chemical in our brain it affects our moods it makes us happy and it makes us sad so in my book, I go through all the foods that give us dopamine levels, okay? One is nuts, two is fish, vegetables, green vegetables increase our dopamine levels. It gives us that euphoric feeling of happiness. So have a look at dopamine and have a look and see if you have enough dopamine in your diet that makes us feel good about ourselves. Because look at me doing this, that's energy. It creates that energy around us. And it just makes us feel great. Okay? So eat right. Exercise. Now I'm not saying go to a gym and pay heaps of money to go to a gym. Especially if you're in isolation. But exercise can be standing on the stop spot and just walking on the spot. Waving your arms around. Doing this. Swim without being at the pool. You might just want to go to a, for a walk to your letterbox and back. Or to the end of your street and back. If you've got a backyard, because a lot of people live in units. What I do, <clears throat> okay, I've got a backyard. So I walk from the back fence to the other side fence. And it's about 80 feet. So I walk and I turn around walk back. Turn around, walk back. Talk, turn around, walk back. And I'll do that for about 15 minutes. So I've calculated it. And what is it? About 20, 20 lengths is about 100 metres. So I'll make sure that I do 100 of those. So that's 500 metres that I'm walking. And the other thing inside my house, I walk from my living room down to my back bedroom. And that's only about, I've only got a small house here, it's about 30 feet. So I'll do that for about half an hour. Especially if I'm on the phone. Because I walk when I talk on the phone. So I'll walk and do my walk out while I'm talking. So I multi-skill. Because that makes me feel good. So we don't have to join a gym, guys. Okay? So we eat right and we get exercise. Sleep is extremely important. So try and sleep good. Okay? And it's not selfish to look after ourselves. 
If someone says to you, hey, I've got a party tomorrow night, do you want to come over? If you honestly are looking after yourself and you think, you know what, I really have to go to bed early because I haven't had much sleep this week, say no to them. It's okay to say no because self-care is always number one. So the last thing I want to leave you with in this little one about self-worth today, point to the most important person in the room. It's always me. M-E. Point to me. Not you. Don't point to me. Point to you. Okay? Because me is always the most important person. So it's not selfish to want to look after you. It's not selfish to want to look after you. Give yourself a bubble bath. Go for a walk. Go and buy some nice foods. Okay? Hope you all have a great day. Good evening or good night wherever you are. And I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.